This first hunt we're gonna we're gonna get into. We're gonna you've heard us talk about the gold mine a lot in our hunts and a lot of people that have secret hunting spots, they like to give names to spots and uh, this spot down here is called the gold mine. We're gonna take you down here and kind of show it to you and give you a little brief summary of how, how the name come up and everything. Y'all just uh, we'll get this vest off and head down here and uh, make sure there ain't no snakes. Might already take the gun. All right, everybody, we made it, finally made it down here. What you see behind me is uh, is what the, the McAdams family calls the the, uh, the gold mine pond. Uh, we've got the gold mine woods and the gold mine pasture up here on the hill is the pasture that you're uh, going to watch this next hunt where I uh, took a big Tennessee Tom in. But could you imagine the two men, this dates back probably 100 years, that they took this pond here. It was actually just what I'm understanding the story is they dug it out looking for gold. And all they found was fool's gold. Could you imagine how upset I would have been a little ticked if I'd have done all this work and all that was here was fool's gold. But anyway, that's just a little fun thing we wanted to share with you. Uh, why we call it the, the gold mine. It uh, means a lot to us because we've been hunting here for a long time, especially Pat. It's got a lot of family heritage with it. But uh, that's how we roll here at Feather Ridge Hunting Club is we, we hunt together as a group, as, as friends and family and have a good time. And we're like a lot of y'all. We name places like this after things in our past. But y'all enjoy this next hunt. Uh, we call it the Gold Mine Gobbler. And uh, uh, we're going to get on out of here and try to fight the snakes out and get up here and work on the food plot. Oh yeah, I hated to, I hated to have to shoot him. He come over the hill. Nah, he was fixing to do something. He he looked like he seen something. Yeah, we got on this bird yesterday. 
and had him in gun range almost. And he come over a terrace. He's about 55 yards. He's about too far. So we didn't take the shot, and he busted us and run off. So this morning, well, yesterday evening, Pat heard a turkey gobble up here, and we uh, decided this morning to sit back up here in this pasture and put some decoys out. And our setup was good. He gobbled. Come into the calling. We set up perfectly in line with him. Big Tennessee gobbler. This next hunt we were about to watch, it's the uh, first part of the season. And uh, this big time that uh, Pat and I were after, we've been kind of chasing him around a little bit, been calling to him, he'd been responding to us, but he had hens and he just wouldn't do it. So about, I believe it was five days into this, chasing this bird around, we had finally decided we wasn't gonna do any calling. And we set up on this bird in, in a spot that we'd found a lot of droppings where he'd been coming and strutting in the middle of the day. And we knew that we needed to get close to this area. We went and found some fresh scratching and we just went and just sat in the woods. He gobbled and did his thing on the roost. We let him do his thing, and we just went here and set up. It's a midday hunt. This is what you got to do to kill these big toms. You got to, you can't educate them and just stay in the woods calling, calling, and calling. We just put the calls up and just waited on them. And check it out and see what happens. Sucker. Man, I had all kind of obstacles in my way. I didn't know. I just had to let him get on up in there. I can't believe a sucker ain't but a two-year-old. Five times we've been after this sucker. hearing me or not, we didn't give up. Our little plan worked. I knew they would come here sooner or later. I knew they would. They're just creatures of habit. 